Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth. Have we got an exciting, amazing show for you today. Today's part two of a story that we began last month on June the 8th, when I brought my guest to the show, Don Diviniste. And Don has such an incredible story, how to survive the murder of a loved one. Her mother was murdered six years ago on June 8th, 28, 2012. June 8th, 2012. And when I was in Kauai recently, I met Don. And I, when, I, when I found out about her story, I was inspired to uh, invite her to come onto the show to tell her story, because really that's what living heaven on earth is all about, is to live in a place of uh, compassion, of understanding, of forgiveness, of uh, being able to overcome some of life's most toughest challenges. And Dawn is such an incredible medicine woman, such an incredible healer, that I wanted to bring her on to tell her story. But then I also invited her to be a co-host with me because she is uh, doing such fantastic things. She lives in, in Kapa, Kauai right now. And we'll tell you a little bit more about that later about why she moved to Kauai and what that is all about. But I want to I want to um, share with you right now uh, her amazing uh, history of what she's gotten herself involved in as far as every single healing modality that you can think of. Incredible, incredible healer. So here, take a listen to this. Dawn Diviniste, she grew up in Apple County in the rolling green hills of Sonoma County, California. She's traversed the United States, receiving life experiences in Pennsylvania, in New Mexico, San Diego, Oregon, and now lives in Kapa, Kauai. Dawn received her certification as a holistic health coach in 2015. And she's also a massage therapist, became a massage therapist in 2017. She completed extensive study in numbers of subjects of essential oils, numerology, astrology, theta healing, body systems, soul archetypes, homeopathy, and spirituality, with her soul path being a lighthouse promoter of goodness. She's innately driven by her life path, 33-6, and she's determined to make a profound difference on the world. And I can tell you one thing, she's already doing it. Dawn began her worldly experience as a cheerleader, graphic, graphic designer, PTSD survivor, a cancer survivor, and has evolved into energy as an energy healer, a Reiki master, divine light, theta healing, certified massage therapist, artist, writer, photographer, self-expression and leadership coach, crystal steward, land healer, and retreat coordinator and facilitator, and now adding to her bio, a radio host. And this woman is absolutely fantastic. And so today, it's an honor and a pleasure, Don, to welcome your debut today of being a radio host. And thank you so much for saying yes to co-host with me. Welcome mm -hmm. to the show. Thank you. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Yay. Like, where do we start? There's so much to talk about. Yeah, like, they, you want to put the reverse on. <laughs> yeah, we we are gonna we're we are gonna do a recap, but first first I want to I want to talk about um, when when I asked you to come onto the show as my guest, 
intuitively, I picked June 8th as, as, as the date. And, and, and why I want to recap that is because how synchronistic everything is when, right. when we say yes. And then later on, when, when we found out that, when I found out that uh, that was actually the, the day that your mother was murdered on June, or when your mother died on June 8th, 2012. And um, that, that was such a um, shocking time. And, and it began with a knock on the door, shock, disbelief, confusion. Um, you were getting ready for work, I'm getting the chills again. You were getting ready for work in the morning. And so just give us, give us a quick recap. And before you do that, let me remind everybody that's listening to the show today that if you did not see the first video, because it's part two, because we're going to be bringing you Don on every single Friday now for the next six months as we're going to dissect this story because there's so much. What we really want is the story to be picked up in the movies and, and Don to uh, enlighten uh, so many people with the power of forgiveness, with her generous, amazing heart that she has. And um, uh, to really make a difference in the world on a large scale. And so that's why we're going to take this story and talk about so many different aspects of it. And um, so if you haven't seen the first show, we're going to put a link right underneath this video today, and you can watch part one there, today's part two. So Don, take us into the recap of what took place June 8th, 2012, when the knock on the door came. Yeah. What a day. Um, yeah, I thought it was like any other Friday morning. Uh, get up 6 a.m., get in the shower. But I didn't make it to the shower because somebody was really knocking loudly and my dog was going crazy. And, um, you know, just to answer the door and then see that it's not someone that normally comes to my house, uh, my, you know, brother's ex-girlfriend. And she's saying, Don, we got to go. We got to go to the hospital. Just there was so much confusion. And and then my husband at the time, he rushed up and he's he's yelling at me, Don, get your clothes on. We got to go now. And I just, it was, I just got so mad. I'm just like, oh, it's just, okay. All right. Um, just got in the car and went to the hospital and didn't know what was going on. Um thinking what my parents like how is that possible that why are they driving at 5 30 a.m and they get in a car accident and i'm just i'm so mad i'm so mad that they would something like that would have happened and thinking that maybe they got up early to go sailing or something and to get to the hospital parking lot walking up to enter and I can't even enter I mean there's a big group of people standing outside and, and they're talking and then they and then they start just you know telling me um Bob's in his second surgery he's almost you know like what what do you what is going on <laughs> yeah there was this guy and he was in front of the house and he was barfing in the bushes and the police were there and I'm like what and the, I was running by you know on my morning run and and yeah, saw all this commotion and they had it taped off. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, there was some intruder. I'm like, this guy, he was really tall. I'm like, wait, that's my cousin. That's, was there another intruder? Maybe there was another intruder. What the hell? I mean, why, why would there be another intruder? I, that makes no sense. And then, um, and then, you know, this lady that I didn't know is like, you know, your, your mom's dead. Excuse me. Uh, mm. You know, I just, uh, I just shrank at that point. And, and, and we, you know, my husband and I, we went around the corner and, and I just am like broken. I just completely broken. Like my mom was so, so sweet. It was just um, outrageous. I I just couldn't believe it. And um, yeah, all I wanted to do at that point, well, all of a sudden it came to me. I'm like, oh my God. I just had this knowing 
this knowing of, oh my God, my cousin, my beloved cousin that we've always taken care of did this like somehow, I don't know what, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I just, the pieces started pulling together and then all of a sudden I, all I wanted to do was talk to the police and, you know, couldn't talk to the police fast enough because I had the most, I was the closest one in the family, I thought, maybe, to him. I was open-minded, always, always was a good family counselor, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. and he had opened up to me in the past, but mm -hmm. I never knew. Mm -hmm. No, he never, he never suggested any bitterness or anything against my mom. I mm -hmm. mean, looking back at it now, I go, okay, now I can see some family dynamics. I can f see like the, what, nine year difference between my mom and her brother and, you know, maybe some uh, jealousy issues with, you know, oh my gosh, my grandma, she bought so-and-so a house and so-and-so a car and, you know, the sibling rivalry and, um, yeah. Yeah, so now you can you can actually sit back and, and, and look at it from a different perspective. But at that moment when you were uh, when when you were in the middle of all of that, uh, there there is just there is just it no made way that no sense it, at all. Right, it made no sense. So uh, you know, I, this morning, um, Don, I've watched this interview, the interview that you and I did from from the show many times myself, and I I just think it's just the most incredible uh, um, movie. Um, and, um, it, it is, it's the most incredible movie. Oh my gosh. Um, and, um, I, it, it's just, there's so many aspects to it. And so what I realized is that we never even talked about what happened to Cody. And so we, that never even came up. So we want everybody to go back and look at that other video again so that they can see uh, your story and I appreciate you being so vulnerable and open and see that this is still very tender to your heart and we're doing honor and justice for your mother Candace Watson and Bob Watson and um, and also for you to 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 have this all heard and there's there's many aspects that we're going to cover we're going to take a quick break on the Cornelia Stephanie show and you're with listening with uh, Don Diviniste, and we'll be right back. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. You're listening to The Cornelia Stephanie Show, and I'm with my new co-host, Don Diviniste. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> Yay, Don. So we're talking, before we went to break, uh, we were talking about your cousin, and when I was I was preparing for the show, I was looking and and I was noticing that we never even we never even talked about your cousin. What happened to Cody? Yeah. Well, you mean in the long run, the short run, all the run. Ah, uh, jeez. <laughs> all right. Well, this is my perspective. <laughs> well, okay. So what we know is, yeah. Now I'm going to back up. I'm going to just mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. he's in jail. He's in jail. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm in jail the trial happened it was you know a couple of years later they I mean, which was nice they warned us up front that you know this was going to be a lengthy process and the trial wouldn't even happen for a couple of years so don't get all riled up in the energy of of that and um but yeah looking back on things um and psychic perspective you know because i I talked to a psychic that first day and yep. you know, we knew that Bob was going to be okay. He was coming back and, and that I, like it gave me such strength to know that he was going to be fine. And, and, um, now he, he did come back changed because of lack of blood and lack of, lack of blood, lack of oxygen. So he, he came back like, you know, a 90 year old versus, you know, 68. Yeah. So, um, he, well, Cody, going back to Cody, mm -hmm. he, um, what I, what I heard was that 
and what I saw in the house later after it was cleaned up was, you know, there were remnants of things that obviously weren't my parents. And, um, and I was, I, I called the police. I'm like, okay, that is not, that does not belong here. That does not belong here. The, get rid of it. Like, I don't want it in the house. It's, it's not. It, yeah. So, cause he was suicidal that day. He was suicidal that night when he came down. Um, but there was some um, planning that he had done when he was in Portland that, that, that made it look like it was intentional. This trip was intentional to, to, to cause harm to them. So how do you know that? Just from the police and the trial stuff that, that came out. Um, and so it was pre premeditated. So, yeah, it's well, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to believe that. It's yeah. really hard to believe that mm -hmm. because of my history with him. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I mean that that that's got to be some like heavy heavy family grudge, really, really heavy. And that's so, really Don. I mean, what was your history with him? Well, I mean, I was sixteen when he was born. But, um, you know, now looking back at it, you know, my grandparents were, were such loves. Um, so my uncle, you know, is his dad and he's kind of, you know, rough kind of biker guy. And so I knew, I knew Cody's mom, she was beautiful, but she had drug issues. And I remember hearing a story about grandma and grandpa going down to Oakland and rescuing Cody as when, when he was a baby because she was in a crack house and, and they needed to go rescue him. And so he actually, Cody lived growing up with my grandparents. Mm. And then my grandma died in um, 2000 and Cody, you know, he was a teenager, and um, then he had to go live with his dad. And and so what I found out from Cody later, years later, was that it was it was very abusive. And um, but my mom and I, we had, we had no idea that that was happening. And so it was like he was he was in this protected space, but then all of a sudden he wasn't. And so I can see this, you know, just looking at it psychologically, how that could, you know, create some bitterness and like, where, where the heck were you when I needed you most? And, you know, yeah, but we, we didn't know, not until he actually opened up to me that, that year in 2012 and, and told me some things, you know, that we had no idea. Mm -hmm. But, um, and then just, you know, the suicidal part where he, he was suicidal. He, he had been looking at, um, like, we had a lot of obsidian around my mom's house, and, and he was looking at the obsidian to maybe cut his wrist, and um, and then he, he drank six Robitussin bottles that night, um, cough syrup, and then he had drank, some, you know, a bunch of JD and smoked some pot and just, like, trying to trying to release himself, but, you know, well, uh, he released his spirit. <laughs> mm-hmm. He released his spirit, but his body was still there. And, um, you know, he's, he's a tall guy. He's, he's big. And um, so, yeah, I mean, start talking about the other stuff. And it's, go ahead. Yeah, I was, well, I was just thinking that, you know, after the trial, so then he went to jail. He went to jail. And he got sentenced. What did he get? Like a life sentence, or did he? Is it like? Well, a, was it? Yeah. Was it considered so I, like a mental thing? I did not go to the whole trial because you know I, <clears throat> I only was supposed to go on a couple days, mm -hmm. and um, unfortunately, you know, the last day, you know, they kind of recap everything. So that was a really difficult day. Um, but the judge was like. He was, he had just never seen anybody like so non remorseful. Somebody that was just so didn't, 
respond at all emotionally at all. Um, wow. When I was there on the stand, you know, when you when you know someone, you look at them and you have, a, you know, a moment of recognition at least, it never happened. It never happened. I would look directly at him and there was nothing there. Nothing. I just couldn't. It was really hard to believe. Wow. Um, so it's kind of like he was dead inside. Like he was yeah, like, no, there. His, like his soul was gone. He, his soul. And, and the psychics say, you know, that he, yeah, basically Cody left. He did. And for me not to, not to, um, not to be angry at, at Cody, the soul. I mean, yeah. I can be angry about the situation and, you know, but, but Cody, the soul, no, he exited. And to like find the compassion and mercy with that bigger perspective of soul contracts. And, you know, this, this is a karmic thing. This is something that, you know, my mom and, and, and Bob and, and him had some divine, you know, soul contract and that in a, in a, in the big picture, it, it did serve a higher good with the community, with the community. It did because it sent a shock wave in the community to love one another that much more because anything can happen. Especially, I mean, gosh, talk about like instilling fear, you know, a, a family member all of a sudden attacks, you know, loving family members and with kitchen knives. I mean, holy shit. And what was, was it? 97, 97 lacerations. Uh, you stopped counting uh, at 97. I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, I just, I, I stopped. I, it was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, in the movies, it's one stab and that's yeah. it. And, yeah. You know, he had, he had them all over his body. So I love what you said, Don. Um, this is this is part of um, the teaching tool here. Because this is part of um, showing the bigger pic picture, and this is part of heaven on earth. Because we are um, living in heaven on earth, and to we're understanding, understanding the, bigger the, picture, the right? big picture. Or at least search for it. At yeah. least search for the bigger picture of, of what possibly could have happened. So the soul contract, I love what you said, you know, the community. And we're talking about the community, your town where you lived, a big town, the right. whole the yeah. Redding, California, a, lots right. of, I don't know what the population is, but. Like near 100,000. 100,000. Yeah. yeah, lots of people. And it was all over the news and everybody was involved. So, um, like you said, it pushed, put, pushed a collective wave um, into a shock. It was a complete shock yes. that sent everyone um, into, uh, like, puzzling, right? Yeah. It's yes. a puzzle. And then to see the well, big gratitude and gratitude for what they have. Yeah. And mercy for what just happened. So let's you and I talk about what do you think the soul contract was between Cody, your mom and Bob. So the three of them sat at a table before they incarnated and decided that, um, you know, as an option, let's. Kind yeah, of. I think that we have many options, and yes, I believe in past lives, obviously, mm -hmm. and I believe on the in the other side. I mean, that was definite when my mom transitioned. That you know, all of a sudden she's communicating with me, and I don't have any doubts about that anymore. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but my well, my my own inner knowing is like I flashed on a a time where she was a queen and. You know, Bob was the king and Cody was just some peon, you know, and, and mm. he got beheaded and, you know, and it was unjust and it was just like karmically, you know, what comes around goes around. Now, I know my mom, see, my mom, my mom had been sick for years. Well, sick, meaning she had uh, carcinoma in the eye area and had been going down to UC Davis and getting checked like every month and had had surgery, but it's like a really, you know, sensitive area, you know, close to the brain. And so, you know, she could have gone out that way. She could have gone out like where she was sick and, you know, 
took a long time and suffering and impact and all that. But I feel like she might have chosen. I'm talking high level here. <laughs> I'm not talking so about great. choices. I'm talking about super conscious or high, higher self choices of, of how we, we, all, we all make them. We all make them whether we believe it or not. I mean, it's all in the thoughts and what, you know, you put your focus on and you kind of have inklings of when you can leave. Yeah, everybody it has, makes. you know, I believe that everybody has an out. Everybody yeah. has an out, right? Multiple outs, yes. Yeah, multiple outs. And then, yeah. you know, you program your body that, okay, uh, I'm going to, I a possible out for me is going to be cancer. I'm going to blah, blah, blah. I'm going to do this. And these are all. Right. All and like, how does it serve me? Well, I want people to take care of me. So I'm going to go in the hospital or I'm going to, you know, th yeah. Or, you know, I want, I want to feel love from my family. So yeah, maybe cancer would be a good way. But you know what? You said it earlier. Um, this is a little bit of a different situation than rather than just um, your own your own uh, suicide or your own death. It's it's different because um, yeah. and I think I'm going to label it suicide. It, it, yeah. I'm going to label when a person, you know, has cancer on some level or whatever happens. It's an out. And we, as divine empowered creators of the truth of who we are, can now, with this level of consciousness, living heaven on earth here now, we have the ability to override that program today with our consciousness. Completely. And we can reprogram our bodies today to, hey, the program that I instilled or what I signed up for a little bit ago, I'm changing it up. Yeah. Yes. In I eight, I'm, I'm changing yes. it up, right? Yes. yes. And, and seek out, right, seek out the people that can help you. And, you know, everything, emotions, energy and motion. I mean, emotions create dis-ease. I mean, it just, it's dis-ease, dis-ease in the body. I mean, I've had pain where, you know, I look it up in a book and, and, and recognize what it is. I change my thought and the pain goes away within five minutes. So yeah. I know that one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And this is, I mean, this is the work that I do. I, you know, helped people heal disease organs out of their body right. with the power of emotion. You know, that's right. what I specialize in, in emotional processing, because it's so important. You know, I, I want to say 95% of all illness is uh, emotional. And I even think that, um, you know, I have no way of proving this. This is my own authority and this is my own belief system that, um, that, you know, even, even babies and people that come in with an illness, they mm -hmm. bring it with from a previous life and they come in and the karma continues. And, right. and this is the part that, that, that I think um, is, is a really big piece is the karma that um, the karmic uh, relationship that played out between you, your um, cousin and mom and dad. Um, that that's something that that really that needed to be made right, and that's why it's so important today that we're conscious because we're we're either when we're operating from a negative place, we're either creating more karma, right, or we are um, operating from a positive place, yeah. and um, so that we don't continue on creating the same war, the same drama, the same okay. beheadedness that we've yeah. done for thousands and thousands of years. Would you right. agree with that? Right. Completely. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, that this, this, this took place. And so now here's your, um, your cousin in jail. Now, have you ever gone to visit him? Are Just curious. I'm curious. No, I'm not kidding. Okay. All right. Sorry. No. The, okay. So <laughs> after that happened in mm -hmm. June, I started immediately seeing a counselor mm -hmm. every week until recently. <laughs> and last month, it stopped. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's been a long time, a long process. Great support. Uh, but so, yeah, it was a couple months after that happened, and I needed to go see Cody, and I went to the jail. <clears throat> And it was way, you know, it was way before the trial happened, but um, oh. I needed to, and I brought my counselor with me, mm. so she was there, and yeah, going in there, I was just so angry, 
yeah that i just the first words out of my mouth were you know what the what the f what the fuck well yeah i don't know if we can say that on here i, so. I mean we probably can't <laughs> but i just said it for you i you know seriously <laughs> well is it what the fuck <laughs> 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 Yeah, what the fuck? That's all I could say. And, you know, of course, he, he just started rambling with all these, like, you know, undiagnosed uh, bipolar and schizophrenia and unmedicated blah, blah, and now I'm on medication. And, you know, but that's just all stuff that, you know, he was, he was fed that information. Yeah. You know, do, do you think that came from his source? No, it did right. not. You know, I mean, it's that's just some words that somebody gave him to use as an excuse. As a label. Because <clears throat> isn't that what our society has done is to label everybody bipolar, schizophrenic, this, that, yeah, this, no. that. No, it's like, no, you have fucking responsibility, you know? Exactly. You did something. Uh, yeah. If I was even, you know, which I see, it, it seemed like, you know, I was actually having a conversation with him. But what I got to see was it was it it became a conversation all about him mm. and nothing i did, i got nothing from it i thought i would get something from it i got nothing from it other than we're done we're done i mean we're done it's just yeah he was a different person he was a and different person that was an awakening for me mm. of he's not who i thought he was and now, am I leaving with harsh feelings? No, at that time, I think I even said to him, you know what, I forgive you. Mm -hmm. And left. And I know that they played that at the trial, and I was just like cringing of what everybody must have thought when I had said that. But, but I had to come to a point of forgiveness for myself. And forgiveness to me, it doesn't mean forgiveness like, I don't know, it, it means a greater understanding. Mm -hmm. To me, it means forgiveness means a greater understanding of how this could have happened and, you know, emotionally, psych psych psychologically, um, the motivations. Um, it's an understanding how we all, myself included, I mean, you know, gosh, if I got to a suicidal point you know in my life yeah multiple times you know and just like recognize that like we're also what um i don't know since you know sensitive and and you know we all we all just want love and acceptance and you know harmony and cooperation and and we don't get that all the time so yeah we we all have a hard time so yeah we, all, we all act on our emotions we uh -huh. all act on we all act on our emotions. Yeah. And when and then when we when we want to act on our emotion to to do harm to the self or to pick up a gun and start school shootings or blow up buildings or whatever it's acting on emotion. And that's really the truth because if people realize that whatever it is that they're so sad and so depressed and what makes you want to kill harm yourself or harm another person. That's why processing of emotions, really finding out what you're feeling and what your feeling state is all about and how you feel, feel to heal, feel to heal from your past, from your karmic ancestry, from, from all the pain and suffering from the past, because a lot of us are empaths and we, we you know, yeah. we, we not only do we carry our own stuff, but we're also carrying the stuff from people that we're picking up from around us, from, from our lineage, from our family, from the people that we're hanging around. And so people act on their emotions and getting in touch with your emotion by feeling uh, is, is really the piece. And it just makes me think about Cody, um, you know, how you said that he was dead, um, like, like he was numb and that really it was all about him. Two things come to mind. Um, narcissistic energy like uh, you know a narcissistic Completely. person right like i didn't want to hear about oh don and i got hurt and my finger got cut and i had to go to the hospital well, i'm like fuck that shit who cares like <laughs> I mean, come on <laughs> oh my god are you kidding you're actually you're actually uh okay but okay whatever yeah 
So narcissistic, right? Because they only think about themselves. You yeah. know, they, they don't, they, they can't, they, they, there's no consciousness for the other person at all. And even though they committed a horrendous crime, uh, but they're just not able to see anybody else in, in the situation. Then I think about your, um, Cody's upbringing and I think about his life around, um, uh, was anybody ever emotionally available for him? Uh, when he was a child. So did he, you know, did, was he, was anybody there for him emotionally when he was a kid? Right. Okay, right. Uh, that, that's one, one part. And then another thing is when you're being, when you're in the system and when you're being drugged and medicated, um, uh, when you're being drugged and medicated, you're being numbed, you're being okay. numbed. Right. And right. so then, you know, that he's now on medication, he's being fed all of the labels and now he's sitting right. in and, and getting fed, like how to, how to deal with the system and inside and inside the prison and all that. And, 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 you know, even how to, you know, be in the court courtroom and yeah, you know, for the judge to say, I've never seen anybody. So, you know, no showing no remorse and you know and when he was sentenced it was yeah life in prison and with no parole no parole no parole life yeah. sentence life and sentence. You know, people people were like oh he you know he needed to get the death sentence and i'm like are you kidding that's the easy way out that's like knowing what i know like mm -hmm. we're eternal beings like checking out that's nothing that's not a freaking punishment that's a freaking reward no kidding that's a great way to look at it oh my it god it's like uh, anyways not that i not that he needs to be punished but no justice he well i'm not saying i'm not saying to you know let him out god no i yeah. no 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 but um yeah <laughs> John, let's t let's take a break. Um, let's right. take a break. When we come back, what I want to do is I want to talk about two things. When we come back, uh -huh. I know we're totally we're totally not going based on our script today at all because I really love being. I know, in the flow but this is it. This is life. Being in yeah. the now. Being right. in the now and totally being in the flow. You know, yes. we had we had a different agenda, and we're we're totally. Um, but I want to send people to your website right now. Let's um, okay. tell tell your website. Okay, Kwai Magic. Kwaimagic.com. Okay, so K-A-U-A-I magic M-A-G-I-C dot com. Awesome. And when we get back, when we come back, I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about forgiveness a little bit more. Okay. And then I want to lighten the load a little bit. And I want to talk about the things that light you up today in Kauai and all the magic and the wonder that you do and all the amazingness that you do and why it's so important that um, people get in contact with you and experience uh, the magic that you experience and what you can offer for them. Okay. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm with my new co-host, Don Deviniste, and we're going to take a, a quick break. We'll be right back. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We're talking with Don Deviniste, how to survive the murder of a loved one. And um, we've got less than 15 minutes left, and we're recapping um, an amazing, powerful movie that played out in Don's life. If you haven't seen the first show, part one, today's part two, go to the YouTube link that's right below this video, and you can check it out there. Share it with your friends, because there's so much juicy uh, information and wisdom and medicine shared in Don's and mine dialogue here on how we're sharing with the power of forgiveness. Uh, so that's what I want to talk about right now, yeah, can Don. Can I interject something? Just Please something that's wanting to come through. Yeah. My uncle, you know, Cody's, Cody's dad and um, Cody's sister, Savannah, my cousin, Savannah. I, I just, I really need them to know if, if, if this crosses their path that, that I have, I hold no, no resentment or or anything towards them and that i wish you know i know it's been a really heavy load for perry and for savannah and that their life changed you know dramatically with this and um i know you know savannah came home to a a, a note a piece of paper on the door saying <clears throat> you know their house there's a warrant to search the house you know, in this homicide investigation and 
it just totally turned her life upside down. And, um, and I've, I've, I've searched for both of them recently and, and I can't get, I can't find them. So, you know, like, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe this will help. And but maybe this will, maybe. I know, you know, and the psychics, they, they wanted me, you know, my, like mom, mom's coming through and, and like hold no, you know, heavy lows like they need to know how loved they are and you know hopefully that 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 will come through someone will share with them yeah. that yeah. they are so loved and yeah to just and I mean can you imagine and see this is another thing Don about you it just speaks so much about you and who you are and what you do because look at your heart Look at your heart. It could make me cry. The, the Well, I know. I'm, like, ready to cry because I feel so bad for Savannah. And, you know, I love her. And Cody was trying to help her before this happened. And, and he did help her. She was going to school up in Oregon and got her signed up. And, and you know, she was living with him. And, and then he disappears. And then he, you know, and she comes home to that. And, and it's just, you know, God. Yeah, you know but, like, the, the important part is to go go on with your life. Like, yes, you've you've endured this horrible thing, but like, make the most of your life. Like, don't let it don't let it drag you down, and don't don't stay down in the in the misery or the suffering. That's not the point of life at yeah. all. You That's, gotta come to this higher understanding. Yeah, and that is the point of what we're overcoming, isn't it? This is what we're healing. This is what we're all doing here to overcome and release the suffering and, right. and, and begin a new way, even though when, when bad things happen to good people, when bad right. things happen to good people, because obviously you guys are all good people, and even even uh, Cody, you know, uh, bless his heart. Uh, and exactly, well, absolutely. exactly. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, this is what heaven on earth is. This is, this is what we're doing here, how we're, um, how we're sharing our hearts, how we're opening uh, a new way of living and being. And that's, that's why what I love about you so much, Don, is how you are right away reaching out to Savannah and um, just with this. And wouldn't it be something if Savannah uh, came to Kauai to have a yes, retreat it would be with you? Yes, what is, Savannah, what is amazing? you're completely welcome at my house anytime, please. <laughs> contact me. Yeah, where is she going to contact you? Website. Where? Contact me on my website, yeah, on kawaiimagic.com, and um, I'll fly you over. <laughs> yeah, see, so the power of forgiveness is so huge. Yeah. You said earlier that um, that forgiveness for you, what it means is you want to recap that a higher level of understanding putting myself in the position of the other you got to walk in their footsteps you know like look at it all look at it all and then all of a sudden you'll have a different perspective um and you might not be so harsh to judge you know it's um yeah it's important to have that higher perspective and to walk in the other shoes, at least try. Yeah, um, because here's the thing, you know, like um, from the higher perspective, we understand that there's nothing even that needs to be forgiven because it was all organized um, ahead yeah. of time. So there's right. really, from the higher perspective, we don't even need to, uh, but forgiveness is a tool. And when we use forgiveness as a tool, and there's so many ways, uh, Ho'oponopono, um, is, is one of the practices that people can use. Um, if you have never even heard of Ho'oponopono, look it up. Um, it's, it's really amazing. And I'm sure that if even people want to work with you, uh, Don, on forgiveness, um, that you wouldn't, you could even offer forgiveness retreats. Yeah, I've seen and, miracles happen with Ho'oponopono. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, like within five minutes, it's just amazing. Yeah. yeah. So it's amazing when we can use forgiveness for, forgiveness as a tool. And really, I think forgiveness starts with you forgiving yourself to lighten the load, lighten the load for, for yeah. yourself, completely lifting yourself into a higher vibrational way of living and being. And then that way, 
is how you're contributing to make the world a better place. So we're about to wrap it up, Don. We've got about, um, I think, two minutes. It goes by quick, doesn't it? Time flies. Oh my Time God. flies. Yeah. So um, what do you want to leave people with? Uh, with today's segment, what what is it that you want? Optimism to share? that anything is possible. Anything healing from any any disease, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, just tell, any. Tell, tell us what lights you up. What you're doing in Kauai right now? What lights you up? All right, taking what people. Yeah, showing them around the island, taking them on retreats. Oh my gosh, showing them the magic. Magic, yeah, magic can happen anywhere, but especially on this island, it's so high vibration. Yeah, instant manifestations. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's the healing island. Yeah, and where's what's your Facebook? Facebook. What's your, fa what's your Facebook handle? Okay, Creative Dawn. Facebook.com slash Creative Dawn. Yeah, yeah. C R E A T I V E D A W N. Wonderful. And did you have a free gift for our guests today? Um, yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> Put me on the spot. Why not? <laughs> yeah, if somebody, if somebody wants wants a, a free. Um, I'll t I'll I'll do the ho'oponopono with um, the first ten people. Yeah, just contact me on kawaiimagic.com, and I'll be happy to work with you. Wonderful. Bless you. Yeah. Wonderful, thanks. wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Don, for being here. Uh, the, people can tune into part three is going to be next month, the first Friday of every month where we uh, capture this incredible story and share your juice, share your magic, and share <laughs> the power of forgiveness with everybody. Yeah, share that goodness. So thank you so much for listening and tuning in to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. You can visit me on my website at corneliastephanie.com, living heaven on earth together with you. We'll see you next time. Namaste. All right. Divina You've been listening, <laughs> You've been listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at corneliastephanie.com.